I would like to show today how the true value of pi must be based on 1.618. So that's what we mean by phi in the circle harmonics. If, when we draw the circle, we need to know that the golden ratio is part of the matrix, the womb of creation. So to get the golden ratio, we all um, know about the golden rectangle, right? And that, that's something I've been teaching for, thir for the last 30 years, how to create a golden rectangle. So we know that if we start off with the unit square, and we'll call that distance one, that distance is one. So we're gonna bisect the square. So when we bisect the square, I now have a vertical line through there. So we know that that distance here is called 0.5 from here to there. What I'm interested in to get the golden rectangle is I look at the diagonal of half the square. That's called the diagonal of half the square. And it has a certain distance which can be measured by Pythagoras' theorem called root five on two. But we put our compass here, the point, and we arc it down. And when we arc down this quarter circle from there to there, or we could measure this distance from there to there. Either way, I get a critical point. All I did was put my compass here and I arced it down, I got that point. And that's how we got the golden rectangle. So what's critical here, what's important is that if this distance is 0.5 here, what's this distance? This is the critical vibration. This distance from there to there is called 0.618. 0.618 is called the reciprocal of phi. So we need to give this a name because we know that phi, we know that phi is 1.618. So this is phi, the distance from here to there. So the distance from there to there is called 1.618. We established this 0.618. So we need to give this a name. So phi with a capital P is 1.618. That's the symbol, a circle with a line. But the 0.618, this little bit here, is called phi, P-H-E-E. -E. I've made up this name for it, and it's a lowercase p. It has a value of 0.618, and it's called the reciprocal of phi. So when we, if this is phi and we subtract the unit 1, what's left is 0.618. So it's called the reciprocal 1 over phi. So, so this is how children and adults for thousands of years have drawn the golden rectangle like the Parthenon in Greece. So we want to take this square again here. I'm going to pick up this unit square and put it inside the circle. So let's draw the circle. This is, we're drawing the circle. It's not a unit circle because it's, um, it, it, it is, it's not the unit circle because, here's the diameter, the unit, the, the, the measurement of one by one is here. All right, so there's the center of the circle. Now this is one, one, one. So what happens is when we examine the harmonics of the circle and we insert the unit square at, in, based on the center, we're interested in this gap here. And it works out that this gap here, so, from here to there is 0.5, and this distance here is 0.618. So this is a fantastic discovery because um, it shows that whenever we construct circles and unity consciousness, we are talking about the golden ratio. The phi, P-H-I and phi, is embedded in the circle. Without this knowledge, without this 0.618, we cannot prove the true value of pi, because the true value of pi must be based on the harmonics of the golden ratio. So that's a really important um, first step in understanding the true value of pi. So I'd like to um, end it there and just um, move to the next one. Just to, I just wanted to repeat this basic information, because what we're doing, what we showed in the last few videos, was that we take the formula for the golden ratio, phi, which is one plus the square root of five divided by two. So this is the critical formula, one plus the root, one plus root five divided by two, which also happens to be um, the diameter of this circle. So for this 
golden ratio to appear, it happens that the diameter of this circle is root 5, and the sum of the radius, the radius here, is called root 5 divided by 2, because if the diameter is root 5, we know that the radius is half the diameter. So root 5 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.618, which is, which is 1.118. Um, and that 1.118 1, 1, 1. is embedded here. So this little section there, the distance between the square and the circle is 0.118. And that is actually a harmonic because this whole distance, if this is 1, if this is 1 and this is 0.118, that means from the centre to the circle, the radius, radius equals 1.118. Eight. And in harmonics, we're allowed, in the um, advanced level of harmonic maps, we're allowed to move the decimal. So if I move the decimal to here, it becomes 11.18. I can move the decimal to there and get 111.8. One, one, one but when we simplify it, we can just call this harmonic 111. One, one. So when we understand that the golden, the mathematics of the golden ratio, the golden rectangle is embedded in the semicircle, based on the root 5 diameter, we have established a, a bell that begins to ring, and it's called harmonic 111. And the reason why I'm excited about harmonic 111 is because that's the sum of all the columns and rows and diagonals in the magic square of the sun. This is bordering what, on what we call solar mathematics. This is what the Hindus called in the Bhagavad Gita, all the knowledge of the Gita came down on the rays of the sun. So this is a celestial knowledge. It's based on 111 harmonic. And it all started by understanding what we call the unit square inside a semicircle. And the key factor is root 5. We need to understand what root 5 is. So in one of the next videos I'm going to show you, we're going to show how we transform from the 2 by 2 square, how the 4 becomes the 5. And we're going to show how Osiris was sitting on the, a double square, which represented the transformation from the, the square to root 5. So this is all encoded and embedded in our history. And um, so stay tuned, there's more to come.